with his regal bearing and kind expression, the Great Pyrenees is one of the most noble of recognized breeds. He combines beauty, size, and endurance in an elegant animal prized both as a working dog and as a companion. Believed to have appeared in Europe in very early times, perhaps as early as the Bronze Age, the Great Pyrenees remained for centuries isolated in the remote mountains bordering France and Spain, where he became indispensable as a guardian of both flock and home. By the 14th century, however, French nobility adopted the Great Pyrenees as a fashionable court animal. Nonetheless, it was the breed's remarkable intelligence and loyalty that found it crossing the Atlantic to Newfoundland with 17th century French immigrants. And by the early 19th century, the breed had appeared in small numbers in the United States. Still, the breed remained the secret of a few dedicated breeders until well into the 20th century. It was finally admitted to AKC registration in 1933. You'll be seeing many great Pyrenees during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed. Others are less so. All will help your understanding of the Great Pyrenees. In general appearance, the Great Pyrenees conveys the distinct impression of elegance and unsurpassed beauty combined with great overall size and majesty. He has a white, or principally white, coat, which may contain markings of badger, gray, reddish-brown, or varying shades of tan. His kindly, yet regal expression should be unmistakable. His keen intelligence, soundness, and coordination mark him as supremely suited for the strenuous work of guarding flocks of sheep in all kinds of weather on the steep mountain slopes of his native Pyrenees. Dogs range from 27 to 32 inches at the withers, bitches from 25 to 29 inches. Dogs will weigh about 100 pounds for a 27-inch animal, while a 25-inch bitch will weigh about 85 pounds. Remember, though, that weight is always in proportion to overall size and structure. Because of the breed's heavy coat, it's important that you feel through the coat to determine actual structure and substance. The Great Pyrenees is a dog of medium substance. Commensurate with his size and impression of elegance, there should be sufficient bone and muscle to provide a balance with the frame. In proportion, the Great Pyrenees' height is somewhat less than the length of body, creating a rectangular outline, slightly longer than tall. Please note that dogs and bitches over or under the height specified by the standard should be faulted, as should animals too lightly or too heavily boned to be in balance with their frame. Correct head structure and expression are essential to the breed. The head should not appear heavy in proportion to the size of the dog. This dog's head is correct. The head is wedge-shaped, with a slightly rounded crown, as seen here. The muzzle and back skull are about equal in length, and the muzzle blends smoothly with the skull. There is no apparent stop. Note the sufficient fill under the eyes. From the front, you can see that the width of the skull is about equal to the length, and that there is a slight furrow between the eyes. The bony eyebrow ridges are only slightly developed. The expression is elegant, intelligent, and contemplative. What about this dog's head? The muzzle lacks sufficient depth. The noticeable stop seen here is not correct. 
Remember that the stop should not be apparent. This dog's head is correct. It is in proportion to the body, wedge-shaped with a slightly rounded crown, and the muzzle is about equal in length to the back skull. From the front, see how the cheeks are flat and that there is sufficient fill under the eyes. The eyes themselves are medium-sized, almond-shaped, and set slightly obliquely. They are a rich dark brown. The eyelids are close-fitting with dark rims. Eyelids which are round, triangular, loose, or small should be faulted. Nose and lips are black, with the lips tight-fitting. There is a strong lower jaw. Missing pigmentation on lips, nose, or eye rims is faulty. The teeth should meet in either a scissors or level bite, although the scissors bite seen here is preferred. Overshot, undershot, or wry mouths are faulty. Receding lower central incisor teeth are not uncommon in this breed. Ears are small to medium in size and are V-shaped with rounded tips. They are set on at eye level and are normally carried low, flat, and close to the head. Another characteristic of the Great Pyrenees is the meeting of the hair of the upper and lower face, which forms a line from the outer corner of the eye to the base of the ear. This dog, in fact, presents a lovely head study from the side and from the front. Its typical expression is elegant, intelligent, and contemplative. This is created by the combination of proper head shape, eye color and shape, good pigmentation, and ear placement. Now let's discuss the Great Pyrenees neck and body. The neck is strongly muscled and of medium length. There should be a minimum of dewlap. The neck should blend smoothly into shoulders which are well laid back at about a right angle to the upper arm. The length of the shoulder blade and upper arm should be nearly equal. Note that the distance from elbow to withers is equal to the distance from elbow to ground. The forelegs themselves are located directly under the withers and are straight and vertical to the ground. The elbows are close to the body and point directly to the rear. The pasterns are strong and flexible. From the front, you can see that the elbows are held close to the body. The elbows are set in a straight line from the point of shoulder to the wrist. The chest should be moderately broad, as seen here. The rib cage is well sprung, oval in shape, and should reach to the elbow. The legs are straight to the ground. Remember to feel through the coat for sufficient bone and muscle. The front feet are rounded, close cupped, and well padded. The toes are well arched. Note that in this breed, there should be a single dew claw on each foreleg. The Great Pyrenees has a level top line. The back and loin are broad and strongly coupled with some tuck up. This dog's weak top line is not correct. A correct level top line can only be determined by feeling through the coat. Dogs that appear to be high in the rear are often heavily coated over the rump. This dog's body is correct with a level top line and a broad close coupled back and loin. The croup slopes gently with the tail set on just below the level of the back. The tail is well plumed and while carried low in repose may be carried over the back when aroused, termed making the wheel. 
When gating, the tail may be carried either over the back or low. It is important to remember that both carriages are equally correct. During exhibition and gating, there should be no manipulation of the tail by the handler. There may also be what's termed a shepherd's crook at the end of the tail, which accentuates the plume. The tail bones are of sufficient length to reach the hock. Hindquarters are characterized by strongly muscled upper thighs, extending from the pelvis at right angles. The angulation of the rear should balance that of the front. The upper thigh is the same length as the lower thigh, creating moderate angulation at the stifle joint. The rear pasterns are of medium length and are perpendicular to the ground. This dog is too straight in the rear. While this one is over-angulated, both are incorrect. This dog's correct angulation balances that of the front and preserves the overall symmetry of the dog. Seen from the rear, the hindquarters, from hip to rear pastern, are straight and parallel. Note again the strongly muscled thighs. Rear feet in the Great Pyrenees have a tendency to toe out slightly. This should not be mistaken for cowhocks. The rear feet, like the front feet, are rounded, well padded, and have well arched toes. Double dew claws on the rear legs should be present. Lack of double dew claws is a fault. In keeping with the breed's traditional role as an outdoor working animal, the Great Pyrenees coat is a weather-resistant double coat. It consists of a long, flat, thick outer coat of coarse hair and a dense, fine, woolly undercoat. The undercoat may be white or varying shades. The outer coat may be straight or slightly undulating. A curly coat, however, is not correct and should be faulted as should a coat which is open and stands off from the body. Scissoring should be limited to feet and hocks. A sculpted look is not desirable. This correct coat is long, flat, and thick. It is more profuse about the neck and shoulders, where it forms a mane or ruff, generally more pronounced in males. There is feathering along the back of the front legs and the back of the thighs, creating the typical pantaloon effect. The hair on the face and ears is shorter and finer than elsewhere on the body. Remember that correctness of coat is more important than abundance of coat. The coat color is white, or white with markings, which may be gray, badger, reddish brown, or varying shades of tan. Again, the undercoat may be white or varying shades of any of these colors, with gray being the most common. Markings may appear on the ears and head, on the tail, and as a few spots on the body. All are correct. A full face mask is sometimes seen and is also correct. But markings which cover more than one third of the body are not desirable and should be faulted. Movement should be smooth and elegant, with power and agility. There should be good reach in front and strong drive from behind. Coming toward you, the Great Pyrenees should move straight and true, with the forelegs carried straight forward. Note that the legs will tend to converge toward a center line as speed increases.
Going away, the rear legs should follow in a straight line behind the forelegs. Always the single column of support from hip to pad should be present. Dew claws may create the appearance of the legs tracking closer than they actually are. This faulty front movement is not moving straight and true. This hindquarter movement is too close. Here there is a lack of effective reach and drive. Here again is correct movement. Powerful, agile, smooth and elegant. Remember that ease and efficiency of movement are more important than speed. He is not generally a showman and should not be penalized in the ring for being less than thrilled with the proceedings. However, his gait should be that of an efficient working dog with no wasted motion. Finally, a word about temperament. The Great Pyrenees is patient, tolerant, and affectionate. It is not his nature to be overly concerned about routine situations. Although he will defend his flock, or his family without hesitation if he feels they are threatened. His general demeanor is one of quiet composure. Although he is independent and somewhat reserved in nature, any sign of excessive shyness or nervousness, or on the other extreme, aggressiveness, is not to be tolerated and should be severely penalized. The Great Pyrenees is a watchful, tireless guardian and a loyal, affectionate family member. So he remains today, having retained in appearance and temperament those qualities which were treasured by the shepherds and French royalty.